a nigga ready from the get go. Y'all hear my shit go, it's Andre. Can your punk ass come out to play safe? Stay in your living These are mountains. The waves. Uh, that one's moving away from us. Well, Brands, get back here now! Go, go, go! Big moves. 60 G's, baby! <laughs> big, big moves. So, touched for 64K. 64K. All time high, 69K. And a big crash up. Uh, that was due to Coinbase issues. Luck the user's funds or something. The balances were registered as zero. And uh, let me see this. So, you can see Coinbase lock up 64K move down to 58k you know people in coinbase can't do anything and now we're here so so yeah so this video is just a quick short one on you know what we're, what we're going to do what you're going to do in this group these whale signals etc you know we've already been going for two weeks now I said i'll do it till mid-march give it like four or five weeks see if we can get something rocking and rolling and that's where we're at so on the, the coin chart you know we're going to see these these whale signals appear here and when the whale appears it means there's a potential buy and you can buy you know you can buy i've tested this so if you go into the e9 updates we've got these videos okay you just work through these videos watch them um, i think it's probably best this one start from here and then they're, they're not too long I think this one is the, the very detailed process on how to enter, okay, how to use the channels. But listen, I'm just going to break it down very simple here. We've got a couple of different channels here. The Bitcoin one, okay, you're going to see these, these things pop in, 15 minute buy, one hour buy, four hour buy, the different time frames. And um, then you're going to see the opposite ones come up. 15 minutes to sell, one hour sell, and so on. So it's a, there's a lot, there's a lot going on, man. There's a lot going on. But really, all you need to do is just get active, man. You know, I'm, I'm mostly in this group, the scalping group, because um, you know I'm a day trader, taking multiple entries per day. But you know, if you're active, we're we're taking multiple trades per day. I mean, shit, we we like, made some good money today. Uh, look at that. Uh, that was that was earlier. So you know we're absolutely killing it. <laughs> so that's literally the vibe going on, and um, you know we, I'm in here all day. Ours is like pretty much in here all day. Um, Dave's doing his thing, and that's it. So we're going to be doing this pretty much every single day now till it hits 150k and then chill. We think about where we are right now when it comes to Bitcoin, highest level since the fall of 2021, which was really around the peak of the bull market, which we know was in pretty short order, followed by a very deep bear market that we've now come out of. Should we be confident that this is going to be sustained this time around? What's different now compared to several years ago? Great. Th thank you for having me. H historically, the, the way that this has evolved is that net new buyers drive uh, more adoption and, and market cycles. And I think the question to ask is, who are the net new buyers in this cycle? And the net new buyers is the global financial system, which is a very, very big group of net new buyers. The Bitcoin ETF is just um, an initial offering that allows the global financial system to have basically 
investment rails, payment rails, ways to put capital towards cryptocurrency and towards Bitcoin within structures that they find comfortable for them and normal and something that they can do from a risk point of view. So I, I think if you look at the total net new market that's opening up mm -hmm. through things like ETFs and you do the basic arithmetic on that, then even within certain conservative estimates, uh, you can see that there's still a lot more value that can flow into not only Bitcoin ETFs, but other cryptocurrency ETFs. And in my opinion, that's really just the beginning because the next stage is then uh, asset tokenization where banks see all these inflows into ETFs right. and then they make assets to compete with the ETFs or to get some of that capital. So, Sergey, in your mind, is the fact that ETF products now exist, is that representative of a turning point in the adoption cycle? Yes, I would say that's a watershed moment where the top uh, asset managers in the world, the biggest asset manager, many of the other large asset managers have gotten to a level of comfort with the asset and the legal dynamics around the asset that they're willing to put out very structured uh, financial products. That's definitely a watershed moment that if you talk to people about five years ago even, I think they would have very serious doubts about that possibility. And that watershed moment is basically a way for a very large market to access cryptocurrency. And the size of that market, I think, isn't fully understood by even um, you know, the average consumer or even some of the other institutions. I think it's really quite a massive market. Uh, so it is a watershed moment, and it is really the global financial market mm -hmm being part of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology right. in a way that didn't exist before. Remember at the party when we served them niggas dandy. They know not to test us, test me, do me, try me. Dripping with that drama, my Beretta's right beside me. One is in the air and one is in the chamber. Y'all ask me what the fuck I'm doing, I'm releasing anger. Quick to dodge danger, I'm taking it one day. At a time I got the fattest...